Greetings hobbyists, this is Arthanza Vool. In this video we're going to have a look at how we can make a shape with really interesting bevel transitions. So one thing I like to do as part of getting better in Blender is try to find interesting shapes and try to recreate them in Blender using the different tools. I find this a really good learning method as it means that you're going to find out how to do different things, especially if you find particularly interesting shapes. And recently I did a review of the Revo Point Range 2 and it has a really interesting shape to it. You can check out that review, it's linked in the description, but we're gonna have a look at how we can create these really cool transitions that flow from one shape to another, which this device has, and I think it makes it look really attractive and interesting as a shape. So let's shift an A, mesh, and then I'm gonna bring in a cube. We'll scale that up a bit, and then I'm gonna S and then Y and bring that to be wider on the Y axis. Maybe it needs to be a little bit wider. I'm not gonna measure this out, I'm just sort of guesstimating all of this. And then we're gonna apply that scale. Now. We've got some transitions of shapes before we get into the bevel, so I'm just going to go into edge mode, control and R there, and then drag it to about there, and then I'm going to go into vertex mode, select those vertices, and then G and X those back, because on the front, this is going to be the front, it has a slight transition there, in fact that might need to be a little bit less, and then I'm going to control and R, put another edge loop about there, select those and then G and then X those as well and that one's more extreme. So we should have our shape looking a bit like this and then I'm going to symmetrize that onto the other side and we've got that there. I think I'm just going to select those and then G and then Y those a little bit further to about here. Okay so that's looking about right and importantly we've got these edges that are going across and all the way around our object, which is going to be very important for this. Next, we're going to add in the bevels for our ends. In fact, I think this actually needs to be scaled on the z-axis slightly. It's not that tall. And then let's apply the scale with Control and A. Then we've got a slight transition on the front here. So let's go into edge mode, Control and R. And then I'm going to click, but then press E because I want it to match the one in the front. So F to flip it and then bring that to the front. I think that's probably about there. And then all of these faces need to be scaled down on the Z axis, but there is nothing on the Y axis. So somewhere about there. Then we're gonna come into the ends. So we're gonna to go to these edges. Before we do this, because we're gonna start applying a bevel, do make sure that you've applied your scale. You can always tell that if you go into N and item, all of these values should be one. Back into edge mode. So I'm gonna add the bevel in here. Control and B, and then we'll just scroll up, and I'm going to go for something like 32 vertices, which is a bit excessive, but if you want to 3D print something and it really, really smooth, that's what you kind of need to do. Now, if I just click to confirm this and we have a look at this side on, you'll notice that this doesn't have a really smooth transition. In fact, let's go into object mode and we can see this. It sort of starts to look a bit obvious where this starts. If I just undo that and then Control and B and do that again and bring this up here. That's because we've got a shape of 0 0.5, which is normally fine, but sometimes upping that to somewhere like 0 0.7 there, or just typing it in, will give a bit more of a nice round transition and lead into it a little bit more subtly. So that's quite a good way to go. We're also going to want to do the same to these edges here. So let's just select those to there. So that's Control and B, and we'll do the same there as well. And then we're just going to alt and X down and then alt and X across so it's on the other side. So we've got our nice general shape here. We've got a hard edge on this top line here, which is going to match what we've got in the scanner. But we need to add this transitioning bevel that goes along the front. So how are we going to do that? Well, there's a few ways. One that's going to require a paid for add-on and one that's going to be able to just use the native tool, so effectively be free. And for both of those, I'm going to control and B scroll down so they've only got one and we want to have this transition zone which is going to be the width over which the bevel changes over so we'll go to there and again alt and X to the other side do you know i could be doing all of this and then alt and X into the other side but it's important to have this part in the middle being done so that we can actually symmetrize correctly otherwise it will cause problems so what i'm going to do is shift and d and bring that to the top and we'll just hide that for now and we'll use that to show the other options later so I'm going to start with the mesh machine method. It is the quicker and easier one to do. But then you do have to have a mesh machine. So it depends what you want. So what we're going to do is select this entire edge there. So we're going to bevel that, but we're going to have a single segment bevel and we want this the width of the thinnest part of the bevel, which is probably going to be about there. 
Then we're gonna select our face that is gonna be thicker, and I'm gonna put Y for the Mesh Machine menu, and I'm going to change the width of it. Bring that up to the wider width. And you'll notice that this transition here and here will automatically go with that. Then I can just Alt and X and cross. So we've got that working. Now all I need to do is go into face mode and select that whole series of faces, just using Alt, and then we can once again Y, and then I can fuse this, which gives me the option to add in a bevel. I'm gonna scroll all the way up to about 30, and then click there, and then we can have a look at this, and you can see what we've done, and it looks really nice. The only issue is that we've got this rather ugly zone just here and here. To fix that, we're going to edge mode and we'll select all of the transition zones there or the edges between the transition zones. Control and B, bevel that, and we want something like 16 segments. And you can make that transition as wide or as thin as you want. I'm gonna go for about there and we've got that really nice shape. Now I actually think that if I go to this edge, this isn't quite wide enough. So I'm just gonna to go to face mode, select there and then there. And then luckily with machine tools, I can Y and refuse and then just make this wider to make it match what it should look like. I think there, nope, still needs to be wider. So let's try that one more time and somewhere about there probably looks better. Cool, let's alternate that to the other side and we've got our nicely transitioning shape. Now, as I said, we can do this without Mesh Machine. It's a little bit more of a pain. Now to do this, we're gonna to need to delete these transitioning zones. So I'm gonna go into face mode, select that, there, there, and then delete, and we want to delete those faces because otherwise this is not gonna work. Then we're gonna go into edge mode, and I'm gonna select this edge, and then we'll select these two edges as well because they're the ones that are gonna be the similar bevel width. So and I'm gonna control and B, and I'm gonna put in place my bevel. So this is gonna be the thinner of the bevels. Then this one in the middle is gonna have the thicker bevel. So control and B, and we're gonna make this much wider, somewhere around there. Then while still in edge mode, we can select that whole edge there, select that whole edge there, control and E, and then bridge edge loops. And then same thing there and there, control and E, and then bridge edge loops. And we've got those transitions in place, again with the harsh edging. So select there, 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 and there, and then Control and B, and then we'll change the width to what we like, and then Alt and X across to the other side. So two ways of creating these bevel transitions, either way, perfectly doable, and then we can come in and add any extra detail that we want. I should probably add that if this is gonna be something as simple as this, where you've only got a few of these bevels to do, I'd probably actually say they're relatively similar in time. It's only when you're gonna be doing lots of these and you want to do them all individually that I think Mesh Machine becomes really, really useful. And importantly, it more accurately visually represents the end points you're gonna get being able to see the bevels and the transition points. And while Mesh Machine has an amazing array of additional tools that I think are really worth the cost, if it's the only thing you intend to do, I'd probably stick with the native method. As always, I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please do hit that like button so it gets shared around a bit more. And there's a link in the description if you want to see some more videos on Mesh Machine. Have a great day, guys.